So hello everybody and welcome to another Dax Fridays, even though it is Tuesday. Yes, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can pick the range from a slicer to put it in your calculations and the calculations based on ranges. So I'm going to show you an example. Let's get started. Okay, guys, let me show you what this is. I have created this chart with Charticulator. If you want to create it, it's going to pop up something here to go to the video. It's on my second channel. And uh, the idea with this chart is it shows you the difference in sales between the years that you pick on a slicer. So if you pick here between 1996 and 98, it will give you the sales variance. So the difference between 96 and 98. You, the beautiful thing about it is that you can move the slicer and it will give you between the years that you pick. So here we have 97 and 98. So if it is negative, it will be negative, otherwise positive. And I think it's a very easy way to see with this chart. And I am going to show you how to make the calculations now. To make the chart a video, just click up there. And at the end of the video, we'll give you a link on the description. There's also a link on how to create a chart thing. So let me show you the calculations first. Okay, so let's start building this thing. I have a table with a category name, that's the, the dimension that we're going to use, you can use anything that you like. And I have created a two measures, one that is sales for 2018 and one that is for 2017. As you can see here, the year has been hard-coded. I don't want that, I want this year to be picked to whatever is chosen in here. So we need to modify that. So we're going to create a new measure. And make this a little bit bigger so you can see. We're going to call it, I don't know, mean sales slicer, for example. And what we need to do here, first we need to ca capture what is the max and what is the mean of what is being selected in the slicer. So to do that, I'm going to use it as a variable first because I will use it then as a variable too. But what we're going to do, well, Maybe not. Let's do it like this. So I'm going to do calculate. This is the mean. So it's the mean of the year because that is uh, what it has been selected on the um, on the slicer. That, that's the value that is on the slicer for all selected calendar year. So for whatever that has been selected go and grab the mean. So if I put this in here, it should give me 1997. If I move it to 1996, it changes, right? And again, if I move it to all, it will give us, so it's always giving us the mean, which is exactly what we want. The next one is to grab the max. So we're going to do that. I'm going to get, instead of the mean, it's going to be the max, and this is going to be the max, and then enter. And if I put it in here, you can see that it's giving us the mean and the max, so if I change this to 1997, it changes. So this is beautiful, this is exactly what we need. Now, this gives us the year, and now we can do the exact same thing that we did here, but instead of hard coding the value, we can just put whatever it was in this slicer, right? So. I'm going to copy that for the mean. I'm going to put this as a variable, mean year. And then I'm going to put return, and then I'm going to paste that. But instead of hard code in 1998, in this case, I think it's 1996, we're going to put the mean year. And this should give us the sales for 1996. So if I put 1997, because we have them here, you can see that it's giving us the correct values, which is wonderful. And obviously, we need to do the same thing for a max. So if we go in here and we do bar max year, and then we put return to execute the variable, and then we do the calculate. Instead of hard coding, we put max here. And my sales match 2000. Beautiful. Okay, that's exactly what we want. Now, I have two more. 
I have the sales variation, which is the difference of one minus one, but nothing weird. And then I have another one, which is the color variation. This is needed to create the chart in chart later, otherwise not needed. Okay, so if you want to create the chart later video, this one, I have just published it on Corval Data Lab. So go there, I'm going to post a link there. So go there, grab it, and start creating the visualization. It's really, really neat. So I hope you enjoy it. I will see you again on Thursday. Until then, take care.